It takes more energy to frown than it does to smile. So I kind of take that with me and I'll put on clothes that make me smile and make me happy. We'll be starting our conversation with touching on body positivity, self-love, and dating. To do that, our first guest today is Nicole Byer. Nicole Byer is an actress, comedian, writer, author, and podcaster. She's the host of Netflix's hit series, Nailed It, and host of popular podcasts, including Why Won't You Date Me? In her new book, Very Fat, Very Brave, The Fat Girl's Guide to Being Brave and Not a Dejected Melancholy Down in the Dump Sweeping Fat Girl in a Bikini, she shares tips on learning how to embrace your body and her overall journey to becoming a hashtag brave badass. Let's give a warm welcome to Nicole. Nicole, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, I can't tell you how many people are excited to on, on the Healthline team and here watching today to have you on the show. And we can't have an episode of Good Talks on relationships without talking about self-love. Um, this is Self-love is a journey that may be a lifetime journey for many. And you're such a strong advocate for being your own biggest fan. Can you talk us through the journey to to getting there? Yeah, I mean, I'm a pretty vain person in general. Um, (laughs) So I think I'm funny, I think I'm beautiful. And I always thought these things, and then you go out into the world, and then the world goes, no, you're not worthy of things, you're fat, you're, you know, you're too dark, uh, what, you're a woman, there's only one woman allowed on a comedy show or whatever. So it's just kind of like the world tells you things, but then, I don't know, I just, I refuse to believe that I'm not worthy of things, that I'm not funny. Um, also, if you don't think you're funny, like, how could you possibly do comedy? Like, you have to think the things you do are funny. Um, it would bum me out if I looked in the mirror every day and I was like, I'm not pretty. Like, that's crazy. That's too exhausting. My mother used to say, um, it takes more energy to frown than it does to smile. So I kind of take that with me and I'll put on clothes that make me smile and make me happy. So yeah, I mean, it wasn't a battle to love myself. It's a battle to justify why I love myself all the time. Yeah. And that's, Thank you so much for saying that. It's interesting to to know and understand that we don't start not loving ourselves or may not start not loving ourselves, that it's maybe the the, the world around us that tells us not to. Um, and to our viewers in the comments, let us know in the comments how you practice self-love. How do you make sure that um, you are consistently practicing that in your day-to-day? And Nicole, another important factor of this relationship that we have with ourselves is body positivity. Can you share your favorite body positivity tip from your book, Very Fat, Very Brave? Mm, Sure. I don't think I'm body positive. I think I just choose not to hate the body I'm in. I hate that there's a phrasing for not hating your body. I think it's insane. Um, But one thing I say in the book is to look at yourself naked and to like jiggle your fat and say, like whisper you love these little parts of your body. Um, Because I think positive affirmations and also like the secrets of thing where you like say what you want and it comes to fruition. So I think you kind of have to fake it till you make it. Like now I don't have to jiggle my fat and be like, I love it. Like I genuinely love it. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, that's like one tip that I think is very important. Yeah, that's awesome. My next question is to those who have access to therapy, therapy can be and is such an instrumental tool for many who are looking to make changes to how they approach their, their relationships. Um, how has your therapist, Mary, helped you approach uh, to, to dating, especially right now? Um, my therapist is very much like right now during quarantine, <laughs> during the corona pandemic, uh, she's very much like do what you feel is good and what I feel is good is like, I'm not looking to Zoom date anybody. I don't want to <laughs> yeah. pen pal for, you know, months on end. So I've just taken a little break from it because for my health, that's best mm-hmm. for me. But, you know, some people like Zoom dating. It kind of takes the anxiety out of meeting somebody for the first time in person. But that's just not me. Uh, so I have uh, taken a little uh, retirement from dating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. I'm sure we can, many of us can, can agree that dating over Zoom may be a little awkward, but who knows? Maybe someone, you know, you can set up a table, a candle and have, yeah. a, have a virtual dinner. <laughs> <laughs> if it works for you, it works for you. I think that's like the most important thing. It's like, you don't have to look at what other people 
people are doing. You do what makes you feel good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I totally agree with you. And before we end this segment, another question, and I'm asking for a friend. Um, what's the best relationship advice you have gotten from why don't you date me interviews over the past three years? Um, I think the best advice I've gotten from my guests on why won't you date me is to be open to let people in because um, I have like walls up. A lot of people I think aren't vulnerable. And I think the best advice was like, be yourself, be vulnerable um, and let somebody in, which I haven't mastered yet. Uh, it's dating is truly inviting someone to hurt your feelings <laughs> or they end up, you know, you get married and you love each other and it's beautiful for however long. But like a lot of times you're just like opening your heart for someone to hurt it. So understanding that has been, I think, uh, helpful for me. Yeah, no, I, I love that. And um, maybe, maybe you can give our viewers a look into how you do that in your day to day is how do you show yourself love? And are there any examples that you can share with our viewers? Um, I show myself love by doing things that make me happy. Uh, pole dancing makes me happy. I'm learning how to roller skate. Yes, I'd love to like get on skates and be able to do it, but like it's harder for me. I have bad balance and stuff. Um, so just doing things makes me happy. Uh, watching dumb shows on television, like I love 90 Day Fiance <laughs> and I have a podcast about it. Like that makes me happy. So yeah, just doing things that bring a joy or a smile to my face. Yeah. And a lot of that I can imagine is just testing and learning, figuring out what you actually like. My friend, she tried out pole dancing. I have a bunch of friends who are doing roller skating as well. And that's pole dancing, for example, is something that they wouldn't have tried before because of mm -hmm. this taboo around it. Um, and they love it and they're getting stronger and it's a workout for them. And they just connect with themselves in a way that they're not able to do when they're running, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's so funny that pole has such a stigma to it because if you think about it, yeah, I originated with like sex workers and whatnot, but they're all, they're strong. Like if you go to a strip club and watch these girls or gentlemen do tricks, or people, people do pole. Um, if you watch them do tricks, it's pretty impressive. And honestly, I don't, I don't find a problem with sex work. I think sex work is real work, um, but also, it doesn't have to be sexual. It's, you can make anything sexual or you can make anything not sexual. It's however you choose to view it. And I implore you, if you think that polling is uh, dirty or whatever, like go look on Instagram and watch these athletes. Cause that's what they are. Like people who are good at it are athletes. They're just as athletic as gymnasts. They're doing a lot of tricks that gymnasts do. I, yeah, I, for me, it's like adult gymnastics. <laughs> I love it. No, yeah, totally. I 100% agree with that. What can we do to better our relationship to ourselves, maybe even before the end of the year? I think, I mean, I have trouble with this because I'm not a perfect person, but speaking nicely to yourself, like I had a friend text me and she's like, oh my God, I gained so much weight during quarantine. I'm like a ball. I'm like rolling out of bed. And I was like, yeah, but are you like happy? And she was like, yes. And I was like, what did you do like this weekend? She's like, oh, we went, you know, hiking and swimming. And I was like, isn't that cool that your round body did that? And she was like, yes. And I was like, yeah, I want you to talk nicer to yourself because I love you and you love you. So why would you meet, be mean to this person that we all love? And she was like, oh boy, Nicole, thank you very much. I needed to hear that. And I think that's like a good way to live. It's like, don't be mean to the person that you love and multiple people love. Yeah, and I think that's so important and something that can be very easily done is to talk to others the way, I mean, or talk to yourself the way you'd want others to talk to you or the way mm -hmm. you talk to others, really. Um, yeah. So it's important to have that relationship with ourselves as well. And with that, you know, go for whatever you want to go for and look for those relationships that you can talk mess with and talk about all the things that you're <laughs> feeling. So Nicole, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me.